Dear students, in this module, we're going to look at the structural traits of the amino acids by looking at a specific example. As you already know, that the size, the structure, the chemical behavior is all different for each amino acid. Now, this diversity gives rise to unique functional behaviors, which are extremely important in the formation and functioning of the proteins. So, coupled with their chemical properties, each amino acid can uniquely contribute in this process. The example that I want to show you is that of an alpha helix. The alpha helix is essentially a spring-like structure as shown here. You know the everyday example of a spring. So if you pull this spring apart, it will come back to its original position and also it has a helix-like structure highlighted in blue. So if I tell you that an amino acid chain can actually form a helix or spring-like structure by simply interacting with itself in a unique and specific way, will not that be extremely interesting? So yes, actually this happens. What happens is that the nitrogens, as shown here in the blue, they interact with the oxygens, shown here in the red, like that, and they make a hydrogen bond. So this hydrogen bond brings the nitrogen and oxygen together. So the residues that are there in the middle, they get folded up like the spring. And if this process was to be repeated multiple times, then you will essentially end up with a structure like a spring. So, how an alpha helix or how a spring can be formed out of a polypeptide chain is simply if every fourth residue, the nitrogen and oxygen, they make a hydrogen bond and they bring those two atoms together and this will give rise to an alpha helix. The alpha helix which we will discuss later is essentially a secondary structure for the proteins. By secondary structure I simply mean that the amino acids they interact with each other and they form these structures as a first step towards the formation of more complex protein structures. So just to review and remind you of what is going on here is that the nitrogens and the oxygens interacting by making hydrogen bonds as shown here and every fourth residue is bonding together and giving rise to a spring-like structure. One wonders if this were to be the external side and this were to be the internal side of the protein then the hydrophobic residues will be on this side while the active residues will be on the external side of the alpha helix. So this is what an alpha helix can look like after simple hydrogen bond formation between every fourth nitrogen and oxygen in the peptide backbone. So to conclude the alpha helix is an example of the amino acids coming together within a single polypeptide chain and this is stabilized by the formation of hydrogen bonds between nitrogen and oxygen which holds this in place and therefore you start seeing the alpha helix which is similar to a spring that is there in our lives ubiquitously. More so on the external surface of the alpha helix, you may have active residues which are open for chemical interaction, while at the inside of the alpha helix, you may have hydrophobic residues that are going to form the core of the protein.